Hi, hi everyone. Welcome back to part three <laughs> of uh, of my story. Um, sorry about the ending of the last one. Um, I'm staying at a campsite in um, the Mendips in the UK, which is a beautiful spot. And I'd highly recommend this campsite, by the way. It's called Tucker's Grave Inn and Campsite. And it is a um, one of the oldest cider barns in in the UK. Um, and it's really cool. They have a cider hatch as well, so you can drink outside. Anyway, um, it's a public campsite. It's currently half term here in the UK. And these people just decided to walk, re, re uh, kindle their relationship <laughs> right next to my van, just as I was ending the previous video. Um, and I'm tucked right in a corner. Um, but they just decided that, yeah, it was a good spot for them to, to come and embrace each other and say hello and it was really distracting so sorry about that anyway um hopefully that doesn't happen again uh okay so in the last video um i spoke about um uh having christmas with some some brits in in australia not really um done it again what's that <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right past uh um, sorry, completely distracted. Um, okay, so in the last video, um, we spoke about uh, me having Christmas with um, some some Brits here in the. Uh, it... <sighs> okay, sorry, distracted. Um, right, so in the last video we spoke about me having Christmas with uh, a load of Brits in Australia um, just randomly and just taking off an opportunity, an invite to have a Christmas sw Christmas Day swim and um, and, uh, and and then ended up having sharing Christmas lunch and, and all of that with, with some newfound friends and it was amazing to take up that invite um, really really turned that experience around because I was quite upset and um, and ended up having a fantastic um, Christmas day and I stayed with them overnight and I decided at this point that um, this has been a month or so um, of being in the van and um, or just under a month and it the van had taken a huge chunk of my finances away and it was looking like I was gonna have to go and get a job and work and that was a lot sooner than I had anticipated because I really wanted to um, just travel around and just enjoy Australia and not really have to rely on, on working and falling back into the trap of, um, you know, kind of a, a nine to five and traveling around the outside of, of that nine to five. I didn't want to do that. Um, so, yeah, I was looking at getting like a call center job or something just to get like some quick and easy money and I really didn't want to so what I did was I put the van up for sale uh, it wasn't long after having bought it but I wanted that money back so I put the van up for sale and I had advertised it mistakenly advertised it in um, on a, a Melbourne um, website Melbourne based website and uh, I woke up Boxing Day, I think it was, and had a load of messages on my phone from people saying, hey, we want to buy your van. Um, and I said, oh, great, okay, yeah, cool, where are you? And they said, oh, Melbourne. And I was like, oh, I'm not in Melbourne, I'm in Sydney. Um, anyway, so in the end, um, what I decided to do was um, drive back down to Melbourne because I had two people who both said, we want it, um, or two groups of people that said, we want it. And I said, well, I'm in Sydney and I, you've got to be pretty serious about it. And they, and they both said, no, no, we want it. The question's asked, do you, you want us to send you some money now? All that kind of stuff. And I said, no, I'd rather not do that. Let me get down to Melbourne and then we can sort it out. You're not the only people asking, so I'm happy to make the trip. Um, so I put up the fact that I was going from Sydney to Melbourne on a website. I think it was called carshare or rideshare.com.au, I suppose. Um yeah, I put up that I was going to do this this drive, and if anyone wanted to join me, pay the petrol money, I'd do the drive in, and and, and they just put up the petrol money, and a couple and their dog 
uh, wanted wanted the lift and they agreed yeah we'll pay all the petrol money and you just do the drive so that's what we did and I picked them up on the 27th of December and we drove down pretty much one hit and I dropped them off where they wanted to go and I took the van to a garage the first people that had messaged me um, wanted to meet me at a petrol station uh, also called a servo in Australia uh, and I, so I took it there to show them and they said they took a look at it and they went oh it's got a big oil leak a big oil leak that's going to cost us loads of money and I said it, it doesn't I've I've just driven it from Sydney um, and, I've, and I've driven from Sydney to Melbourne about three times this month and um, it's I've had no issues and the oil is like you know the oil's full it doesn't have an oil leak and they said no it does it does it does um it'll cost us loads we'll we'll give you two and a half grand less and I think I'd advertised it for four grand and I said absolutely not no way no way so a uh, bit annoyed because you know they were like no we definitely want it we definitely want it and then they were like there's a big oil leak and that wasn't so anyway so I I drove away and I and I spent the night somewhere and then I phoned the other people that were asking about it and I said hey um, if you're still interested it's still available and they said yeah yeah we want it we want it come and meet us so I went and met them and uh, one of the guys was it was a mechanic uh, both English so two English mates um, and they wanted a van to travel around Australia in for a few months um, one of them was a mechanic and he looked it over and he went yeah it's perfect how much was it and I said four grand and he went, yep, here you go, no problem, and just handed it over. And I said, uh, total honest, like complete full disclosure, the people I showed it to last night were concerned about an oil leak. And he was like, no, there's nothing wrong with it. So he gave me the asking price. So all of a sudden, <laughs> I had four grand back in my bank account. And I think I paid three or three and a half grand for the van. So I made like $500 or a grand on it, having driven it around for a month. Pretty cool. Um, just put it back in the bank account. And uh, but then I was back in kind of like the same situation that I found myself in at the beginning of December. I was now I was in Melbourne and I didn't have a van and I didn't have any accommodation booked and I didn't know anyone in Melbourne. And I was like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and this was just before New Year's Eve. This was like the 28th or the 29th of December. I, was like, I don't know what to do. So I went into a like a backpackers travel agent. Um, there's loads of them around Australia. It's kind of like Star Travel, STA Travel that we have in the UK. Um, I think it was a Peter Pan's in Australia. There, there definitely is a travel company called Peter Pan's. I think I went into a Peter Pan's. And there was one guy, it was like a new shop. It was still being renovated. There was one guy behind the counter. And I said, hey man, I, really, I, you know, I want to get up to Townsville eventually which is probably going to be an episode in itself. Um, but I want to get up to Townsville eventually, and um, I don't know how to do it. You know, I, I'd love to be in Sydney now, but, I, you know, how, how much is a train ticket? How, can I get a plane ticket? He was like, everything's booked up, man. You're not going anywhere for a few days. Best thing to do, Greyhound bus ticket, multi-stops. You can stop as many times as you want going in one direction. You can jump on and off the bus as much as you want going up the east coast from here to Townsville and I was like oh okay that sounds cool he said on your way why don't you stop at like Coffs Harbour um, Fraser Island um, and a couple of other places along the way and we'll book you in some tickets for like some tours so you know you'll stop at Rainbow Beach and then you'll go out to Fraser Island and you can spend a couple of days there and you can do like a four by four tour and all this stuff. So that's what I booked. And that cost me, I think, about a thousand dollars. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. You know, um, it will get me back to Sydney. It will get me to Brisbane. It will get me to Townsville. That's my transport done. A couple of activities. Um, and then it's just kind of spending money and, and I'll see how that goes. So we did that and I paid him. And then he said, what are you doing this evening? <laughs> And I said, I don't have any plans. I don't have any accommodation. I don't really know what to do. And he was like, it's my birthday. I'm just going to nip next door to the bottle shop, get a six pack, have a beer with me. I was like, okay, cool. He said, I've got a couple of mates turning up um, in a bit. Like, just have a beer, chill out. You might as well. I was like, yeah, okay, sweet. Um, so that's what I did. And then his mates turned up 
load of Brits, load of Brit backpackers that were living in Melbourne. And they said, what are you doing tonight? I was like, I don't know, I've got to try and find a and b or a hotel or a backpackers or something somewhere. And they went, our housemate's away. You can stay with us. I was like, you sure? They said, yeah, absolutely. We're going out for the night. We're going to a few clubs, a couple of bars. Um, but you can come and stay with us. They're away for like two weeks. You can come and stay in their, in their room. It's not a problem. It's like, oh, awesome. Okay, great. Um, so there's me with my big backpack in backpack all my bags my luggage going out with all these strangers um to clubs and bars putting like my bag in like the middle of the dance floor and us all like dancing around it and having drinks and stuff and man <laughs> it was a crazy night uh, for this guy's birthday um and then i went back to their house and stayed in their spare room um and i stayed with them for 10 days i think and I'm still in touch with those guys as well. Um, so I had money back in the bank. As a thank you to them, I you know, bought them beer and I took them to the cricket. I took them to the 2020, which is a 20 over match. It's like in the evening, they call it the Big Bash. It's really cool. They have like fireworks and um, dancers and all kinds of stuff. It's really, it's really awesome. Um, I bought myself a ticket to the, to the Ashes. So I went to the Melbourne Cricket Ground, the MCG and watch the Boxing Day test and stay with these people for two weeks. So again, <laughs> just embracing the just embracing the experience and saying yes to the opportunity. Um, you know, the generosity of strangers, unbelievable. Um, of course, you know, I was really sensible about it. Um, I had reservations, but, um, you know, I was, I was, you know, there were kids my age, um, you know, a group of them, a mix of boys and girls. I felt very comfortable with them, very safe. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, just embraced the experience, said yes to the opportunity, and what an experience, what a story. That's one of my favourite episodes, one of my favourite times. Um, because I just thought those people were amazing, and I made sure that I, you know, let them know how thankful I was. I continually offered them money for rent or food, I made sure there was beer. I made sure I took them to the cricket. And they were happy with that, you know. Um, and uh, and just had a fantastic time. So so that was that. Um, I had my Greyhound ticket. So I stayed with them for about 10 days. And then I said, look, I'm going to move, move on back to Sydney for a while. Um, I hope you don't mind. And they were like, no, it's cool. Our housemate comes back. It's perfect timing. Um, like, it was great to meet you. And I'm still in touch with them. So, so that was awesome. That was a real fun adventure. Um, so next episode, I'm back in Sydney. Um, I stay with uh, some some new people. Um, I get a flat share for I think a month. Um, that all went wrong, um, and I think we've both sides of that party. So me and them. I think we have different. Uh, interpretations of the situation unfortunately we all fell out in the end um, we don't keep in touch but i will talk openly and honestly about that um, and my take on it um, in in the next episode so thanks again for for watching i hope you're getting something out of it if you have any any comments or questions or anything like that um, just reach out to me the reason i'm putting this story out there is to hopefully inspire other people to travel and adventure and take up opportunities um, and also to reach out and to let you know that I'm here to encourage you and to work with you to make all this kind of stuff happen for yourself as well because if I can do it anyone can do it so um, yeah I hope you're enjoying it and uh, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time okay bye for now